Hi, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to create a macro to change my shading in this form. What I've done is I created a form for someone and without thinking I got to um, item 20 and I realized that their form had the shading as completely black and so I recreated it exactly how it was. But I personally think that that would be a huge problem because um, it's it, when you go to print, you're going to use up all your ink making it that black. So you probably want to um, have the shading a lot lighter and maybe not so filled in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of having to go through each one, I'll show you actually how, um, how fast it is right now um, to I'll just show you the speed and then you can compare the difference. So this is using quick keys, which I would have to go to each item. So I would have to um, go Alt, J, T, B, O, S, Alt, Y, and then I can find the light by doing the LT. I just typed L and I want to do LT vertical. And so actually I think I'm going to go with LT horizontal just because I think it would be easier on the eyes. So I'm just going to press the return key the enter key and then I'm going to tab over to the OK button and you'll see here that we now have um, instead of the black shade in we have lines running down and I think that that's just going to be easier when we print so now instead of having to go to each one and do all of those keys I'm going to record a macro now what I could have done as well if um, it had been a choice was I could have gone into the replace and replace actually has formatting um, so you could find something and replace it I could have gone in if um, the option was there for borders and shading but it's not they have the highlight um, option but that's different than shading and so I couldn't do that to replace the shading there is some code that you can write, but I'm not familiar with how to do it. So I think the fastest way for me to get this job done, I did show you how how long it took using the quick keys, but I'm going to show you how recording a macro will just make it even so much faster. So the first thing that you want to do is I know that um, with recording my macro that it records keystrokes and I can't record the selection of the cells because there's like the, there's uh, this one here only has two columns that are blacked out this one only has one and the one that I have selected here has six so that is not something that's going to be consistent and it would not be uh, time um, uh, valuable well it just would be a waste of time for me to record a bunch of macros to select like one two five or six or whatever so I want to get my form revised it um, quickly and the fastest way to do that I think it would be to record a macro so the macro um, recording feature is in developer now if you do not have developer up at the top of your uh, tab then you need to go into file um, options and customize ribbon which is down here and then you'll notice this main tabs right here so basically there are several items under the main tab I'm just going to minimize that and if you don't have the developer tab then chances are you do not have a check mark in developer so stick that check mark in there with your box with your mouse pardon me and press OK and now you will have the developer tab so then I press the developer tab and I press record macro I'm going to call it change to um, uh, vertical light LV because it's light vertical so um, no I just remembered that I actually went with horizontal okay so you're gonna give your macro a name I'm gonna call it change shade LH and then in the description I'm going to say change shading to light horizontal and the reason you want to do that is because you may not um, use this macro for a, a while again and you're going to want to know what it does so you can step into your descriptions um, under your macro list when they're all done and um, 
you, you just you might want to do another macro at some point to change it to something else other than light horizontal so it's just best to um, have names and have descriptions I could make a button um, like the buttons that are up here on my quick access toolbar you will not have all of these um, on your to toolbar I do have a tutorial on how to um, make a custom toolbar and you can find that on my channel um, but I'm not going to make a button with it. I want to use the keystrokes because I think it would just be a lot faster. So we're going to go to keyboard and then what I'm going to do is you'll see in here it says press new shortcut key and you'll also see that the commands it's telling the um, computer that um, we're in the change shade LH uh, macro and we're going to make a quick key for it. It talks about the categories over here in macro. And so um, current keys, that, that would be if um, we were going to change um, some quick keys, if, if you created one and you just don't like those quick keys um, uh, in your document and you want to change them, if we had already done it, they would be here. And you'll see that once we do it, I'll do a Alt-C. That's what I've decided that I'm going to do. And you'll notice down here it says currently assigned to, it's unassigned. So that means that the, that key combination is actually available. So we're going to say assign and you'll notice now that it does come into the current keys and then we're going to say close. Okay, so now you'll notice over here in the developer um, tab, we have the stop recording, pause recording and macro security and, and macros and visual basic. And those aren't grayed out anymore because we are now recording and you'll notice on my um, mouse, I'll just move it around a little bit here. You'll see that there's a little cassette tape that's um, below the arrow, letting you know that you're actually recording right now. So um, what it does is it records keystrokes. So I'm going to go in and type the keystrokes for this macro. So Alt J T B O S Alt Y, and then I'm going to do the um, L for the light horizontal, and then I'm going to use my Tab key to get over to that OK button and the Enter key. And I don't know why, but for some reason it it goes back into the table so you're going to have to click into your developer and then you're going to have to stop recording and now if I highlight this I can do my alt C and you'll see how fast that is so that's fantastic so now uh, that's all I have to do from now on whenever I want to change shading to the horizontal light that's not good okay so it says one of the values passed to this method or property is out of range now I'm gonna guess it has to do with going into the um, tab so I'm just gonna say debug uh, line width is 0.75 I'm just gonna go back to here line width is 0.75 oh I bet you because it's only um, that shouldn't be a problem Hmm. Let's delete it. Whoops. We'll just delete that line width and see what happens now when we do it. Um, close and return. Okay, now we'll just try that again and see what happens. Alt C. And we're not getting that debugger. So that could have been what it was. You'll notice that my um, borders and shading here got messed up. So when, if that ever happens, all you need to do is go back into the design. You won't have the table tools design and layout on unless you're actually, you have a table that you're working in. Go into the borders, go into borders and shading. And I'm just, oh darn, first I need to go out of here because I had that cell highlighted, that wasn't a good thing. So I need to select my table and I'm just going to go back into borders and shading, pick the borders and shading and you'll see that it is here where I want that to be and just go like that and it's fixed again. So, um, so basically now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to try and see if I, oh, I don't think I can do that. Well, I might be able to. 
let's just see. Alt C. Yeah, that did change that way. Alt C. But I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about changing my. Um, I'll do Alt C. So this is great because I've been able to go through and basically change some of the ones that are beside each other, which would make it faster, especially if there's one. So you basically you want to just select the cells that you want to change to that shading and whatever you have selected is going to change. I'll do an Alt C there. So it is nice that um, that I had that issue with the record macro because if that happens to you, then you're going to know that um, you can basically your macro will let you know if there's something wrong and delete it. I think it had to do with going into that tab, but that doesn't really make sense if because it said the width of the column. But anyways, fixing taking it, it did highlight what the problem was, and so just deleting that seemed to fix it. And so that's fantastic. So so I think I'll end this tutorial now and I hope that that helps someone. Um, if this does happen, like I say, the way that the border here is cutting off, all you have to do is uh, do as I showed you. And I'm not going to do it right now because obviously they're going to change throughout the, me doing this. So I'm just going to um, go through and finish all of the document. And then what I'll do is I will... Um, come in and change those borders all at once instead of doing it every time it doesn't really make sense to do it that way okay so I hope that this helps someone and basically whenever you record a macro you want to use the quick keys and um, um, I'm just going to show you and if you go to my tutorial on how to do the quick access toolbar I believe that I do explain a bit about quick keys if you use your alt key you'll get little tiles um, up at the top here um, this is kind of annoying here on my quick access toolbar because it doesn't even let you see the icons but I created a table for myself so that I knew um, what number um, was assigned to what tool and you just automatically once you start using them all the time you'll memorize them so anyways um, if you if you see this key like to get into the file tab I would just have to press the F and I would get into that if I wanted to go to the options there's a T that's by options which is over here you'll see that T and then you can use your down arrow key instead of clicking with a mouse and then you can use your tab key to go in between um, items or you can see right here customize the ribbon is the underlined letter is B so I just do the alt B so that's how you get quick keys to work when you're um, when you're recording macros when you go out of Word once you've recorded a macro you will get this message changes have been made that affect the global template normal do you want to save those changes now um, I would prefer to not have to record that macro again so I'm actually going to say save and then that way I know that when I come back into Word again those um, that I will be able to um, to use the um, um, the, the quick keys and the macros that I recorded. So I'm going to say save. Okay, so I hope that helps someone. Have a great day.